Good morning everyone and welcome to our morning inspiration. Saturday, May 25th, 2024. We give God thanks this morning for His goodness, for His grace and His continuous mercies towards us. God has shown us that He is a God that cares. He is a God that desire our good. And may as we look to him this morning, may we give him the honor, the praise, and the glory worthy of his name. Our reading today comes to us from Isaiah chapter 1, reading from verse 2 to 9. And it says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's scrib. But Israel doth not know, my people does not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corrupters, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They have gone astray. They have gone away backward. Why should he be stricken anymore? He will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart fainted. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and petrifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers. Except the Lord of hosts left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Amen. What a word this morning. This is a word of strong rebuke. This passage, it conveys a message of divine disappointment and rebuke towards the children of Israel. The Lord see the rebellion the corruption and the lack of understanding that exists among them his people but despite all of that he is pleading with them pleading that they would return to him some serious stuff come out in this passage so this passage speaking about judea and jerusalem and so here god sent a message through the servant isaiah so he was given a vision of the state of these two cities. The Lord has been nourishing these two cities, these people, the children of Israel. He has been keeping them. He has kept them through countless challenges, protected them from enemies that seek to destroy them. He provided for them. He did so much and have been doing so much for them. And yet still, they found it in themselves to rebel against God. Does that sound familiar? How many times have God come through for us? How many things have God done for us? And yet still, it doesn't matter how many things he did or what he's doing, we still find the time to rebel against him. We still find the time to complain. It seems like God can never satisfy us. We operate like a bunch of ungrateful people. And it is so sad. God is too good to us for us to be acting like these friends. Why do we feel that we have to exhibit these kind of behavior to a God that only loves us more than we can ever imagine? Why? It says that the oxen, even the cow and the donkeys, they know their owners. Yeah. But Israel, the people of God, 
it seems like they are oblivious to their creator like they have no clue who god is it's like god has never done anything for them and that is so sad they are so sinful they have become so sinful and so consumed by iniquity they are exhibiting such evil behaviors they are so corrupt and they corrupt those that they go amongst and they have totally disregard God and forsaken him and for what reason for what reason why what has God ever done to us for us to be treating him like that what has he done to us do we hate him so much do we despise him so much why do we keep treating God in this manner and then we expect him to run to our rescue every time we call but we have no respect for him whatsoever oh why does that sound like a, a good bargain to you does that sound fair to us come on we need to get a hold of ourselves this is not a good state that israel was in and we today are guilty of some of these very things and it's not a good look and because of our actions because of our behavior it has caused god anger to be kindled and that is why israel was constantly entering into captivity their enemies come in on so many occasions and destroy the cities burn them to the ground kill its citizens all because they have forsaken their only help and they have gone astray to their own lusts and desires and because they have left the protection of god and they have turned their backs on god destruction come upon them and the same message is for us today if we continue to do these things if we continue to rebel against god if we continue to turn our backs on god we are only taking ourselves from under his protection we are only bringing destruction upon ourselves and do you think that make god happy it doesn't make him happy god does not take pleasure in the death of the wicked god does not take pleasure in anyone dying especially dying in their sins it makes him very sad very sad and he says that look here the head is sick and once the head is sick it is gonna be difficult for the body to become whole again because the mind has a controlling power over the body and so for they to become whole again it has to start from the head and the heart the heart and the head has to be taken care of there has to be a purifying of the mind and the heart so that transformation can begin god likened the state of israel as some sore it says what the the, the wounds and the bruise they are so petrifying ugly it is not a pretty sight and to make matters worse they are not even cover up they are not being treated so the sores are just dear and it's just decaying it's an awful sight an awful sight it means therefore that israel was in a very bad state very bad state and so because of their disobedience the country is left in desolate as i said they are burned so many times the enemy come in and destroy the city so many times they are held captive so many times they are thrown down by their enemies because of their rebellion and the daughters of zion judea and jerusalem they are just like desolate in the desert they are left like you know an empty house abandoned house because what the presence of god is not there they have basically drove away the presence of god and god is pleading with them pleading with them to return but you know in spite of all that decay in spite of all that god give a glimmer of hope so it's bad 
but it's not all bad because at the last part it says that what there is still a remnant there is still a remnant and i say praise god so in spite of the state of israel there is still a remnant that remain faithful to god and because of those remnant god has not totally forgotten or forsaken them and the same goes for us today the world today is intact because there's still a remnant who is standing up for what is right in the church the church don't fall on its face because god still have a remnant and no matter the state you see the church in some time don't forget that this is god church and no one can destroy god church and there's always a remnant god always have a remnant and the reading say were not it for those remnant that it would have been just like Sodom and Gomorrah do you remember the state of Sodom and Gomorrah and what God had to do to them so it is saying therefore that if not for the remnant that God has still that this world would have perished a long time ago but the remnant is staying the hand of God and God is holding out a little longer hoping that his people will come to their senses and I pray this morning you know this message it is such a powerful message and a profound message and a message I hope that we don't take for granted I encourage you to go back and to read it as well rebellion is not a pretty thing and we must not make the mistake to stand against God because it won't be a pretty sight it won't be a pretty sight God is a loving God but he is also a just God and a God of judgment and when God said enough is enough then enough is enough and so friends I pray this morning that as we think about the reading and as we think about our relationship with God, may the word of God inspire our hearts to draw nearer to God because of his goodness towards us. May we seek to want to be in his presence daily and to draw nearer and still nearer to him who is able to save because God is good to us. God do not deserve the treatment he get from us sometimes. He doesn't. And we have to be fair. If the table should be reversed, would you want your friend to treat you the way that you treat God? None of us would accept that. In fact, we would cut off those friends completely and say, this relationship is done. Yeah, we would. If we are honest with ourselves, we would. But God does not treat us as we deserve he reproved those he loved and he rebuked them but at the end of the day we are still his children and his desire is still to save us and we must accept his grace and turn from our ways and turn to his way i pray that god will continue to bless us and may he continue to keep us in jesus name amen